I'd like to welcome you to Centerville United Methodist Church. My name is Will Montgomery, the lead pastor, and it's a joy to welcome all who are here and all who are worshiping online. For those who are worshiping online, we invite you to register your attendance. You also can fill out a prayer request form as well. And we also have an online chat host. Uh, her name is Margaret Welker, and we invite you to engage in conversation uh, as we worship together. For those who are here in the sanctuary, we do have a way of registering your attendance. We have a black folders there, and you'll find not just a place to register your, your attendance, but also to submit prayer uh, requests, uh, cards, and also offering envelopes if you'd like to use those uh, for our time. I want to let you know, yesterday was a, a busy day in the life of the church, and a wonderful day in the life of the church. I came up here a couple times throughout the day, and to see our confirmation class begin their journey. Uh, and at parents' night out, we had lots of children who were here and sharing in games while parents were having a night out. And our Upwards basketball program is up and going. And so they were here from the wee early morning all the way through the evening. And the reason why I want to highlight that is that yesterday uh, they invited all those who are involved in Upward to participate in our You Feed Other program that we're used to doing uh, once a month. And so they set a goal of 500 packets, and they ended up collecting 1,505 uh, packets yesterday to be able to uh, meals. That's wonderful. So that means we have the next two months off. I'm just kidding. We'll continue uh, to do that. But how wonderful to be able to have people who are associated with Upward to come in to hear that call and to respond in such a wonderful way. And so thank you, Upward uh, folks, for being able to, to respond to that call. I'm delighted that you've come uh, to share in this time of worship. Today we will be sharing Holy Communion. For those who are online, this will be a great time to prepare uh, your table as we move into this time of worship. Let us now join our hearts together in a time of prayer.
joyful way to enter into a time of worship. Would you please rise as you're able and together we'll join in our call to worship. Praise the Lord. The righteous will never be moved. They will be remembered forever. Let's lift our voices now and join together in singing 2236, found in the faith we sing. This, this hymn gather us and celebrates that there is a place for everyone here in God's house. So let's sing together now. seated. Please join me now in our opening unison prayer. God of heaven and earth, you sent Jesus into this world not to abolish the law and the prophets, but to fulfill them. Fulfill your purpose in us that we will may be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Well, for all our youngest members of our church family, it's time now for Kids Quest. Miss Joy and our stuffed lamb Zebedee are waiting to take you on a learning adventure that will focus on Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Today, you'll be learning how to make a difference. And moms and dads and caregivers, since it's a communion Sunday, our Kids Quest kids will come back into worship to receive communion with their families. At this time, I invite you to turn in your hymn book to page 38 uh, as we welcome new members into the life of the church. I invite uh, Bob and Ginger and Shirley, if you will come forward.
As you see Ginger, Bob, and Shirley come forward, many of you might be thinking, wait a second, aren't they members? <laughs> They've been here for a good long time in the life of the church, celebrating and sharing and ministry in this place. And uh, most recently, uh, the church that Shirley and Ginger grew up in, which was Community United Methodist Church in Arlington, closed its doors uh, in this, at the last annual conference, and so they thought this would be a good time uh, to officially join the church here, even though they've been sharing so much. Bob comes to our church uh, by way of the Catholic Church group and the Catholic Church in the greater uh, Seattle area, and so uh, we welcome all of you as we share together. And so, Bob, I have uh, two questions to ask of you, one just of, of Shirley and uh, Ginger. Bob, as a member of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, I will. I will. And now for all three of you. As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? I will. I will. Members of the household of God, I commend to you these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We, we give, give thanks, thanks for all that God has already given you. you. And, and we, we welcome, welcome you in Christian love, love as, as members, members together with you in the body of Christ and, and in this congregation of the United Methodist, Methodist Church. Church. We, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the Church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. The, they're going to remain standing as we offer this prayer, but I invite anyone who would like to come and to, to stand behind them, put a hand on their shoulder to welcome them, and also as a sense of belonging as we share together. So anyone who would like to come and to share in this prayer as Pastor Gator then also offers the prayer. Let us pray. God, we give you glory and praise for this wonderful day, for these people before you who have responded to your call in their lives and have fulfilled their promise to you. We rejoice in all that they've already done in our congregation and that we'll be a part of the journey to come. We pray your blessing upon them, that they might continue to grow as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. 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 Welcome. Come on. Thank you. Our first lesson is from Isaiah 58, beginning with the third verse. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you, you serve your own interests on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this fast that I choose to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, and to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger and the speaking of evil... If you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, choir. I feel like the sermon's already been preached. Our New Testament lesson this morning comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. You'll find it on page 4 of the New Testament section of your pew Bible. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how, it, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built upon the hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So on the first day of my preaching class in seminary, the teacher, the professor, stood before us and said sternly, the sermon is not about you. The sermon must always point to Jesus. Now, I don't remember for certain if she was swagging her finger at us, but I certainly got the message. And okay, fair enough. And yet, we also know that the sermons teach us quite a bit about our preachers. For example, we learned of Pastor Ellen. Remember, Pastor Ellen was an avid LSU fan, and she was from Louisiana and loved her gumbo. And then there was Pastor Marty, who grew up on a campsite in North Carolina and once was pulled over for driving the camp van at age 12. And when we learned that Pastor Michelle used to love wearing her fuzzy bunny slippers around the church office, that seemed quite natural for her. And we learned that Pastor Gitra used to organize and manage the National Symphony Orchestra. But far more importantly, just this very last week, we learned that Pastor Gitra is also a crazy bird lady. And then there's Pastor Will. Now, Pastor Will has this thing for Duke University. And that's because he went to Duke Divinity School. Now, all the rest of us, we go to seminary, but if you went to Duke, you went to Divinity School. Now, I find that a little bit ironic, considering that their mascot is a devil. And it's not just Duke, mind you. I mean, just down the road from there is Wake Forest and their demon deacons. Now, I went to Wesley Seminary, and we only had good deacons. <laughs> well, anyway, I digress. So how do you know if your pastor went to Duke? Oh, don't worry, he'll let you know. I'm just kidding, of course. Truth be told, Pastor Will is one of the most humble people I know. And okay, so I think it's fair that you also learn a little bit about me as well, particularly that this might be the last sermon I'm invited to preach. <laughs> now, I grew up in a German home with a German mother who also was a very accomplished artist. And uh, she primarily works in watercolors, but is also skilled in many other media as well. And it was always important to my mother to instill a little bit of culture in her children. But I just wasn't gifted artistically in that way. I even suffered through seven years of piano lessons. And while well, that didn't stick, 
And to be fair, I think my piano teacher suffered far more than I did. Now, as those of you who are mothers know, once you're a mother, you will always be a mother. And for those of you who have a mother know, she will never stop mothering you. And so it was just a few weeks ago over the Christmas break that I found myself in the east wing of the National Gallery of Art with my mother, absorbing my semi-annual dose of culture. Think of it kind of like a COVID booster shot. <laughs> a little dose can go a long way. Now, I like art, and so I admit it really wasn't all that bad. I quite enjoyed spending the day at the museum with my mom on this cold and rainy winter day. And it, we went someplace I hadn't been before. We were up in one of the tower rooms of the East Wing, and I found myself standing in front of a large white canvas with a thin vertical green line meticulously painted down one side. Now, one thing that I've learned about art is that it often reaches deep into the soul of the artist. And what appears on the canvas can reflect the deep emotional stirrings in the heart of the artist and the viewer. So I stood in front of this painting transfixed and honestly a little bit stumped. What was the artist trying to convey? Perhaps the title that the artist had given this work would help. Something like Eternal Envy in the Siberian Wilderness or Train Delay at Mount Vernon Square Station. <laughs> so I looked at the little white plaque at the bottom of the painting next on the wall and was ready to read that evocative title that would make all things clear. And this is what it read. Green Line on white canvas. <laughs> My soul was crushed. <laughs> and so when the National Gallery announced that they would be accepting submissions for their perspectives on a pandemic exhibition, I thought to myself, how hard can it be? And so, imagine with me for a moment, maybe close your eyes if that helps, you're walking into the American Masters Gallery, these large vaulted ceilings, and over to this side, there's a Georgia O'Keeffe with her buffalo skull, or whatever that is that she draws. And over here, there's a Jackson Pollock, and we don't know what he draws. And my favorite, Edward Hopper and his Nighthawks. And then right in the, in the middle of all those is my masterpiece. Now, before I present it to the National Gallery, I figured I would share it with you all because you all were what really guided and supported me through the pandemic. So I wanted to share it with you first. But I, I do admit I'm a little bit nervous because this painting means a lot to me, and I really do hope you like it. So, Gita, if you're still talking to me, if you would help me <laughs> uncover it. <laughs> so, all right, we'll let the choir see it, too. And tech team, maybe you could zoom in so that the online worshipers could get the sense of the rich colors and textures there. <laughs> and it's going to have its own little plaque down here on the wall, and it's going to say, Quarantine, by Phil Moore, 2023, Ink on Melamine, <laughs> from his brooding Centerville period. So, well, clearly, I'm not going to make it as an artist. And the jury's still out whether I'm going to make it as a preacher either. 
But this painting is about how I was feeling during the early days of the pandemic. There were days when I didn't want to get out of bed, when I just wanted to stick my head under the pillow, and when I pulled it back out again, everything would be back to normal. I'm sure you had those days as well. But as good as my painting is, I admit there is something wrong with it. You see, while this painting captures my emotions as good art should, I think there's a danger in dwelling there. We all know the saying, when the going gets tough, the what? Oh, come on. You're worse than my Ezra Bible study group. Let's try that again. When the going gets tough, Very good. All right, much better. But how are you actually supposed to get going when the world is falling down around you? You see, the problem with my painting is that it's all about me. The answer starts by changing the narrative. It's precisely when the going gets tough that God calls us to be the salt and the light. And the point of salt and light is not that they exist for themselves. Have you ever eaten a bar of salt, kind of like a granola bar, just one big stick of salt? Of course not. Salt isn't good that way. The value of salt is that it seasons other food and makes it taste better. You see, God always wants us to be salty, not for our own sakes, but for the sake of God's world. And light is the same way. When light is the focal point, all it does is attract moths and mosquitoes. No, the value of light is that it comes not in itself, but in what it offers when it casts out the darkness around it, when it illuminates and shines and points the way. Yes, God wants our lights to shine, not as a spotlight upon ourselves, but as a beacon, giving hope to others. The world around us needs hope, and we possess that hope. We know the light of the world. God has made us the salt of the earth, not by our own doing, but by God's grace and by being surrounded and enfolded and embraced by God's love. We have something different to offer this world, something wonderful that makes life taste richer. And Jesus' message was not just to his disciples or to the devoted elite. No, he spoke these words on his Sermon on the Mount, This was his first major public sermon recorded in the scriptures. And he cast his net wide to all who might hear. You don't need to be a super Christian to shine God's light. You don't need to sing solos or lead Bible studies or preach from the pulpit. You just need to love others first, as Jesus did. Imagine how different the world would look if all of us were salt and light to one another. So why does it feel like faith is so bland sometimes? Why does church feel so bland sometimes? Perhaps it's because our salt has lost its saltiness. Are we just going through the motions? Are we really just in it for ourselves? Is our righteousness just an act we put on for others or for God? You know, one of the most frequent complaints people have about the church today is that we're just a bunch of hypocrites. We demand purity, but offer so much less ourselves. Our denomination is in turmoil as Christians judge one another and the world around them? I don't think that's at all what Jesus had in mind. 
Remember those Beatitudes from last week? Blessed are the haughty, because we know better than you. Blessed are the self-righteous, because we have this holiness thing all figured out. Blessed are the self-absorbed, because it's really all about me anyway. The prophet Isaiah has something to say about that in our Old Testament lesson today. Now this section of Isaiah, which is sometimes referred to as Third Isaiah, was written in the post-exilic period after the Israelites had returned from their exile in Babylon. It points to God's servant, who we now understand to be Jesus, and to God's servants, who we now understand to be us. So how do we as servants reflect the servant? Well, that's what the people of Isaiah's day were asking as well. Look, we're fasting. We're going to church. We're following all the rules. God, why aren't you taking heed? And here's God's answer. You serve your own interests on your fast day and oppress your workers. You fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with wicked fists. Boy, doesn't that sound like our denomination in our national political climate today. And God goes on. Such worship will not make your voice heard on high. Instead, God says, is not this the fast I choose? To loose the bonds of injustice? To undo the thongs of the yoke? To let the oppressed go free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light will break forth like the dawn. You know, I have little stomach for the shouting matches in our denomination and in our political sphere today because I can guarantee that the people at the parking lot of the Home Depot where our Hot Meals team pulls in to feed them, they don't care. They need to see an Isaiah 58 church, not a hypocritical, self-absorbed church. They need to see a serving church, not a judging church. They need to see a loving church, a caring church, a feeding church. That salt will never go stale. So what about you? How salty are you feeling today? Maybe it's time to turn off Fox News or MSNBC for a while. Get away from the anger and the vitriol and sign up to serve food at our library food distributions or hug a confirmand or support our youth and kids' homeless ministry. Send an encouraging note to a struggling teacher or a friend or neighbor. A few months ago, I was asked to preach at the Lamb Center, which is a day shelter for the unhoused in Fairfax Circle. On my way there, I must have passed at least a dozen churches, all different denominations. And I couldn't help but think to myself, if every one of these churches and all those within their doors were living Isaiah 58, oh, how different our world would be. Maybe we wouldn't even need a lamb center. You know what I learned during the pandemic? I've been surrounded by scores of volunteers over the past three years and hundreds more who supported financially and through donations of food. And the view from above my pillow? Well, it looked like a new dawn would be coming after all. You see, this pandemic has brought out the very best in Christians who saw a need and never unsaw it, who have given sacrificially of their time, their energy, their money and their muscles for the sake of someone else. Yes, there has been great suffering. There has been great pain and loss 
and loneliness and isolation. Yes, the pandemic has stolen something from all of us. And yes, there is a time to mourn, and to mourn just as long as you need to, and that's different for everyone. There is a time to grieve, and there is a place for fear and for self-doubt and even for self-pity. There are times to look within. But yes, there is also a time to be the light again. Healing begins when we can turn the why me into the what next, God. Or as Isaiah puts it, when your light, then your light will begin to break forth like the dawn. Your healing shall spring up quickly, your vindicator shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. And then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here am I. When the going gets tough, be the light. When the going gets tough, be salty. When you feel like an ostrich and you want to bury your head in the sand, say it with me. Be salty. You didn't say it with me. <laughs> say it with me. When you want to bury your head in the sand, be salty. Amen. It is good to bring our full selves to worship, to laugh, to be challenged, and to pray. So let's now take a moment to quiet ourselves and be in prayer. God of grace and glory, we are so grateful for the leadership of extraordinary people, shining light into the darkness, transforming a curse into a blessing, and bringing the gift of salt into bland lives devoid of hope. There is no part of life you do not touch, O oh God. You get in underneath the surface. You draw us out and lift us up. You wind your love around us until our defenses are lowered, our barriers are broken down, and the power of your love reveals the, the beauty you intended for all your children. Help us to bring light into all the darkness of life spreading hope for a better world, a world where justice is made real by all your children living together in harmony. And help us to bring salt into the blandness of life, encouraging joy that comes from living in a world that dares to hope for the future that you promise, a future where all your children will know themselves as loved and valued and treasured, created in your image, bringing you glory forever. Make us like that, Lord, so that our faith is not only in our words, but in our lives, not only in what we say, but in what we do, passing on your love like the salt that blesses and sharing your light for the world. For we ask it in the name of our Savior, our teacher, and the one whose light shines through us. Amen. In every worship service, we're given an opportunity to respond to God's goodness and love for us. We thank you for your ongoing gifts and pledges and for supporting ministries like Confirmation that grow and nurture our younger members of the body of Christ in Christian love and fellowship. So we invite you to continue your faithfulness and giving by dropping off your offerings in those boxes in the back of the sanctuary, by scanning the QR code on your screen or in your bulletin. You can give through the giving portal on our website, and of course you can always mail in or drop off a check. And we thank you for continuing to share God's love and light with others every day. I'd like you to turn it in your hymnal to page 12 as we prepare for Holy Communion.
Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins, who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and before one another. Let us pray. Merciful Merciful God, God, we we confess confess that we have have not loved you with our whole heart. We have have failed to be an obedient church. church. We We have have not not done your will. We We have broken your law. We have have rebelled against your love. We have have not loved our neighbors. We we have have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free Free us from joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ has died for us while we were yet sinners. This proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. We will continue with the great thanksgiving on page 17 as we'll offer the sung responses. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give our thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth, or you had formed the earth, from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you've revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. In his baptism and in table fellowship, he took place with sinners. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood and the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here in our homes and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. And by your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, our honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever.
now with the confidence of children of God, let us offer the prayer that Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The bread we break is a sharing in the body of Christ, broken for you. And the cup that we lift up is a sharing in the blood of Christ, poured out for you. As United Methodists, we celebrate an open table where we're all invited to come and share in this means of grace. We'll do so by way of intention. That means as you come forward, we ask that you come with an open palm. The bread will be placed into your palm, and we ask that you dip just a portion of that into the cup. And after receiving Holy Communion, if you'd like to kneel at the altar rail, you're certainly welcome to do so. For those who are still yet uncomfortable sharing in the common uh, the, the intention, we do have uh, prepackaged communion. We also have gluten-free in that way. And so if you prefer that, we'll have someone here in the center. If you need gluten-free or the prepackaged, we invite you to do that. And for those who are online, uh, Pastor Gitra will also join uh, with you for a special time of sharing in Holy Communion. I invite those who are to assist to come forward at this time. We will start by sharing uh, on the outer edges for those who are on the, on the sides and the choir will serve there. And then for those who are in the center, we will bring the, the stations to you. And for those who are in the center, we'll come down the center aisle. Continue to enhance worship for our online community. I'm happy to share in the giving and receiving of communion this morning. Now, hopefully, you've already gathered your elements together. So, let us begin. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ poured out for you. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for being present with us wherever we are, for transforming our humble places into holy places, for bringing us together, though we are apart, for uniting us in your spirit and transforming us through this means of grace. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, be with us and remain with us, we pray. Amen. Let us now rest with joy and thanksgiving in God's presence while we wait for all to receive.
Please join me in the prayer after after communion found on page 11 of the hymnal. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Before we stand and sing our closing song, I do invite those who are involved in the uh, confirmation journey, the confirmands and uh, the adults who are taking part, if you'll just come and you're not kneeling, but you're just going to come stand uh, here and face the congregation and we'll have a prayer for you as you uh, embark on this wonderful journey Uh, that started uh, officially yesterday and will continue on for a few months of a wonderful uh, engagement and uh, conversation and questioning and, and encouragement along the way. So we have 13 uh, confirmands in this year's experience, and so let us uh, pray for them uh, as, we, as they begin this journey. So let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for the, the gift of faith, for the gift of your church, for the gift of your Holy Spirit, for the gift of these confirmands. We're thankful for what has been, for the instruction that has already taken place, for the waters of baptism that has already flow, uh, flowed for the ways that your church has surrounded uh, these confirmands with love and care and instruction and encouragement. And in this set-apart time, we ask, O Lord, for your Holy Spirit to be at work, to be at work as they gather uh, together each week, as they engage in conversation, as they engage in questions, as they embark on this journey of discovering more and more of who they are in light of your grace. And Lord, we do pray that in the midst of all that takes place, that you would reveal yourself to them in a personal way, in a communal way, uh, as we seek to grow in personal piety and share in social holiness. As, we, as they step forward in faith, we ask that you would continue to surround them with your Holy Spirit to be an encourager, along with those who are taking part as mentors and their families and guardians uh, and all the adults who are taking part in that journey. And so we ask your blessing upon Sienna and Georgiana, Bennett, Carter, Benjamin, Chase, Owen, Gabriel, Adrian, Campbell, Natalie, and Greta. And upon Sean and Jesse and Pastor Gitra. Send forth your Holy Spirit upon them. Lead them in this time of great discovery that there might be truly many aha moments yet to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As they return to their seats, I invite you to stand as we sing together. Together we serve. You may find it in the faith we sing.
Well, the busy week at the church continues. If you uh, noticed in the lobby as you came in, there were the greeting cards set out for the teachers at Center Ridge Elementary School. If you were here last week, we started writing some cards just to thank our teachers right down the street from us, teachers, administrators, janitors, cafeteria workers, uh, all of them. It's been a tough couple of years for, for the teaching profession, and we just want to let them know that their community cares. So take a moment, sign a card out in the narthex, uh, and do that. Also in the narthex in the lobby, you'll notice that there are going to be some kids with big soup pots, and they'll be collecting for their Super Bowl of Caring. There's information on the back of your bulletin about that. Uh, you can vote for your favorite team for the Super Bowl, or you can vote for I Just Want to Watch the Commercials. Uh, either way, uh, the money will support their mission to the homeless in D.C. through the rest of the year. And finally, today is also our uh, chili cook-off this evening. If you've signed up, wonderful. If you haven't signed up yet, come anyway. Uh, just let us know if you're going to be bringing a chili. Uh, you can go to our website to sign up, uh, and that way uh, we can prepare the right number of uh, sample cups and all of that. But join us, everybody who comes will be a judge, and so you can enjoy that time of fellowship together. Uh, and now, let us go forth knowing that God doesn't want us to be a bland church. God does not want us to be bland people of faith. So when the going gets tough, be... Amen. our special friends at home. I hope you felt God's presence there with you. This was a tremendous worship service. What a joy it is to share in the full life of the body of Christ. I hope you also enjoyed that communion experience that we offered for you. We'd love to know what you thought about that and how you received that. So as you go forth into this week, may you be blessed. And we look forward to seeing you again next week here and online. God bless you.